Have you ever wondered what would happen if children were left to rule themselves without adult supervision? This tantalizing question is the premise of the engrossing novel, Lord of the Flies, penned by the Nobel laureate William Golding. Published in the mid-20th century in 1954, this book has intrigued and provoked readers for over seven decades now. The narrative plunges us into the world of a group of British boys who, in the wake of a catastrophic plane crash, find themselves stranded on an uninhabited island. With no adults surviving the crash, these young boys, ranging from toddlers to teenagers, are forced to fend for themselves in this harsh, untouched wilderness. Now, imagine the thrill and the terror of it. One day you're in a structured school environment with rules and routines, and the next, you're in a wild alien world, where the only rules are the ones you make. The boys initially try to establish order, electing a leader, setting up rules and assigning roles. They attempt to create a microcosm of the civilization they've left behind, a testament to the human instinct to seek structure and order even amidst chaos. But as the days turn into weeks, the veneer of their makeshift civilization starts to crack. The lack of adult supervision, the struggle for survival, the creeping fear of an unseen beast, all begin to erode their sense of order and camaraderie. The boys, once innocent schoolchildren, start exhibiting primal instincts, their actions driven by fear and the will to survive. The island slowly transforms from a place of adventure to a dystopian nightmare, a mirror reflecting the darker aspects of human nature. This transformation is a reminder that beneath the layers of societal conditioning and learned behavior, there lurks a beast within each of us, waiting for an opportunity to surface. And so begins the descent into savagery, where the thin veneer of civilization peels away to reveal the beast within. In their struggle for survival, the boys' personalities begin to shine through, revealing a microcosm of society. Ralph, our protagonist, represents order, leadership, and civilization. He is the voice of reason and sanity, striving to maintain a semblance of society on the island. Piggy, Ralph's right hand, symbolizes intellectualism and science. His glasses, both a practical tool for fire and a symbol of perception and understanding, are crucial to their survival. Contrasting Ralph's rational approach, Jack Meridu is the embodiment of savagery and desire for power. He's the catalyst for the group's descent into chaos, his choir boys turning into his personal hunting tribe, echoing the militaristic and authoritarian elements of society. Simon, a shy, introspective boy, represents the spiritual and natural human goodness. His encounter with the Beast, which is nothing but a dead parachutist, reveals the novel's central metaphor, that the true Beast is not an external force but resides within each human being. The conch shell, found by Ralph and Piggy, is a powerful symbol of democratic power. As long as the shell is respected, order is maintained. But as the boys succumb to their primal instincts, the power of the conch wanes. The Beast, initially a figment of the boys' imagination, becomes a real entity for them. It symbolizes the innate savagery lying dormant within all humans, becoming more potent as the veneer of civilization slips away. Then there's the Lord of the Flies, a pig's head on a stick, a gift from Jack's tribe to the imagined beast. It serves as a chilling reminder of the boy's descent into barbarism. It's a physical manifestation of the beast, representing the evil and violence human beings are capable of under the right circumstances. As the island paradise turns into a dystopian nightmare, the boy's descent into savagery becomes a mirror for society's darkest impulses. The characters and symbols in Lord of the Flies serve as a stark reminder that beneath the thin veneer of civilization, the beast lurks, waiting to emerge. Beneath the adventure and horror, Lord of the Flies is a profound meditation on the nature of humanity. At the heart of this iconic novel lies a stark portrayal of the conflict between the human impulse towards savagery and the rules of civilization designed to contain and minimize this impulse. One of the primary themes Golding explores is the degradation of moral constraints when removed from structured society. Stranded on a deserted island, the group of boys initially attempts to establish order, creating rules and electing leaders. But as time passes their veneer of civilization peels away. The boys descend into savagery, revealing the beast within, a potent symbol of innate human evil. This descent is not sudden, it is a gradual process, mirroring how societal norms can erode over time when not reinforced. Golding suggests that without the structures of school, family and government, which provide societal order, human nature takes over and society collapses into a state of chaos. 
Another theme that emerges is the power struggle between democracy and dictatorship. Ralph, who represents democratic leadership, and Jack, who illustrates autocracy, constantly clash. This conflict showcases the difficulty of maintaining democratic ideals in the face of fear and violence. In today's context, these themes resonate profoundly. In an era where societal norms are constantly being challenged and redefined, Lord of the Flies serves as a cautionary tale. It reminds us of the fragility of order and the dangerous potential of the human capacity for cruelty when unchecked by societal constraints. Furthermore, Golding's exploration of power dynamics offers timeless insight into political systems and leadership styles. It encourages us to question the nature of power, its use, and misuse in society. The Lord of the Flies is as relevant today as it was over half a century ago, offering chilling insights into the human condition. It compels us to reflect on our own society, the structures that hold it together, and what could happen if they were to fall apart. Despite its dark themes, Lord of the Flies has left an indelible mark on literature. Since its publication in the mid-20th century, the novel has attracted a broad range of responses from critics and readers alike. Some initially dismissed it as mere gloomy fiction, while others hailed it as a masterpiece that lays bare the darkest corners of the human psyche. In the years following its release, Lord of the Flies was even banned in some regions, its stark depiction of human savagery deemed too unsettling. Nevertheless, the novel has stood the test of time, proving itself to be much more than a simple tale of stranded schoolboys. It has permeated popular culture, influencing a multitude of later works, from Stephen King's The Stand to the animated series The Simpsons. Not only has the novel left its mark on pop culture, but it has also continued to be a staple of academic curricula around the world. The book's exploration of themes such as power, fear, and the inherent evil within humanity makes it a compelling study for students of literature, sociology, and psychology. It's a testament to the book's enduring relevance that it continues to spark heated debates in classrooms and book clubs alike. The impact of Lord of the Flies extends beyond the realm of literature, it has been adapted into film, theater, and even opera, each iteration offering a new perspective on Golding's haunting vision of a society abandoned to its basest instincts. These adaptations, while diverse in their interpretations, all underscore the novel's timeless message. That beneath the veneer of civilization, the beast within us all lurks, ready to emerge at the slightest provocation. In the modern age, Lord of the Flies continues to resonate. It serves as a stark reminder of what can happen when we allow fear and power to override our sense of humanity. As we navigate the challenges of our time, Golding's cautionary tale remains as relevant as ever. The Lord of the Flies remains a compelling exploration of the darkness that lurks beneath the surface of human society. So, why should you plunge into this dark tale of survival and savagery? Well, for starters, Lord of the Flies is a masterclass in character development and symbolism. Each character, from Ralph's democratic leadership to Jack's descent into savagery, is intricately crafted, revealing layers of human nature in their struggle for survival. The symbols like the conch and the titular Lord of the Flies are not mere plot devices, but profound metaphors that resonate with the story's core themes. Speaking of themes, few novels manage to explore the human condition as deeply and candidly as this. The struggle between civilization and savagery, the loss of innocence, and the inherent evil within humanity are all laid bare in this disturbing yet captivating narrative. Golding's exploration of these themes is as relevant today as it was over half a century ago. Which brings us to another point, its continued relevance. The Lord of the Flies may be set on a deserted island but its undercurrents echo in our modern societies. The conflicts between order and chaos, between the rule of law and the lure of power, are as prevalent today as they were in the novel. The book serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of civilization and the ease with which it can descend into savagery when the checks and balances are removed. Furthermore, the book's critical reception and impact cannot be overstated. Over the years, it has sparked countless debates and discussions, inspiring readers to question and examine their own beliefs about human nature and society. It's a book that doesn't just tell a story, but also makes you think, and that's a rare find. So, if you're looking for an intriguing read that offers profound insights into human nature and society, Lord of the Flies is a must-read. It's a book that will challenge your perspectives, provoke your thoughts, and leave you contemplating long after you've turned the last page. 
In the end, Lord of the Flies is more than just a story. It's a timeless exploration of the human condition that challenges us to confront the beast within.